lecture, we want to talk a moment for a moment about the timing of strategic action, strategic activities. The notion of do you move first or do you wait until somebody else moves and then respond in the marketplace? Um, this is important because sometimes it's easier to be first and sometimes it's easier to follow. And we'll talk about when moving first makes sense. It's not necessarily, if you're first, doesn't necessarily mean you win because there are some other dynamics we have to take into account. And also, there's some risk that you'll spend a lot of money to try and get a, a, a position in the marketplace and then create for everyone else knowledge about how the market works so they can then enter with a much more focused strategy and spend much less money. So those are the sorts of things that we talk about when we talk about being the first to take a strategic action. It generally is good for you when you're, it helps to be the reputation of the leader, of the innovator, of the market maker, um, or whenever you're, you feel that there'll be uh, significant problems with other companies coming in and taking away your customers because they've already, when customers go with you, they've already invested quite a bit. When the iPod came out originally with the music, people had downloaded a lot of music on their machines, so incompatible players had a harder time entering the market. Also, if you have property uh, rights like patents or copyright to protect you, there's some opportunities to be first to move in that particular case because that stops people from copying you. And also, sometimes, whenever you're first there, you can learn faster than anyone else if there's a lot of very new learning to occur. You can be learned faster and then actually get yourself in a stronger cost position than competitors that have to come in later and, and spend a lot of money as well. Um, you can also be the one to set the standard for how the technology works. When Intel was one of the first into the computer industry, computers with the Intel architecture ended up becoming the dominant logic for the industry. But there are other times when it's not such a good idea to be first. Sometimes it costs an awful lot to, um, to, to figure out, to do learning about how the marketplace works, to create awareness of what you're trying to accomplish. You spend a lot of money building an industry and not necessarily having the best product to support what the customers are looking for. So you're spending a lot of money on learning. If that learning is public, everyone is learning, but you're financing everyone's learning, essentially. So someone else could come in with a much more well-articulated product offering. Also, whenever the, what you're coming out with is a first try, a primitive kind of an offering, other people may come on with a more advanced offering and leapfrog you relatively quickly. Um, sometimes the way that the market works, people can be on top of you very quickly. Like with apps on phones, you come out with an app, someone can follow with a successful app that does a few more things and integrates maybe into some existing products that you didn't do very quickly on your tail and take advantage of all of the awareness you build up, but actually sell their product into that market. But also, sometimes it's just difficult to know whether it's best to move first or to move later. So when you're thinking about entering a new market with a blue ocean strategy or whether you're taking some other offensive action by building out at a new location or moving into China or whatever, you have to understand some of the things that affect how well you do. For example, if it depends upon complementary assets, which means you have to have a, a retail location that will sell your product, you have to have people, uh, customers that are trained in some of the activities that your product needs or have other products that support them. Um, if you're integrated with those products sometimes and you could become the dominant structural approach or language in the marketplace, then it might make sense. Other times it might not. If there's a lot of infrastructure that's required for the whole industry, for example, distribution channels that aren't specific, but there has to be people that sell your kind of product on a large scale, then sometimes it's easier to let the first person finance all of that infrastructure building, like, in, like for example, building um, powering stations or battery charging stations for cars, for electric cars. Once all that infrastructure is in place, it might be easier for a follower to come in with a really nice electric car that is uh, more cost effective because they don't have to help finance all of that, that purchasing. If, um, if buyers have to learn new skills or something to adopt a new product, if the skills are specific to your product, then that creates switching costs. They're not going to want to take somebody, if other product, if they've learned how to use yours, 
But if those skills will work with any product, then sometimes it becomes you're the one investing in building those skills, and then they can t the customers then take what they've learned about how to download music and the like and start using it with a competitor. Um, essentially, if a customer has a hard time switching once they've bought the product, like happened with Apple and when Apple came out with the iPhone and things like that, um, that has a real advantage for them. And if there are other competitors that influence purchasing decisions and they might influence decisions away from your product, then, then being a second mover might, might be a better strategy. So you see how the market lays out first and then find out how you can offer a complementary or a specific product niche in that marketplace. Timing is important. Marketplace is filled with companies that tried to be first movers and then ended up losing that market space to the second person that came on board. Facebook, for example, wasn't first. MySpace was there. They built this pent-up demand for that kind of product as well as just the technology developing and then using state-of-the-art art technology at the time. Facebook was able to take over that marketplace and essentially put MySpace out of business. So those are some of the timing issues that we need to deal with when we think about taking strategic action. In the next lecture, we'll talk about strategic action and when we think about it in terms of changing the scope of your operations. If you're a small firm becoming larger, if you're just a very niche market and you only do one thing in the value chain, like write the software application but you don't do anything else, adding in vertical integration kind of things like some adding some manufacturing or distribution channels, opening a retail store and the like. That's what we'll talk about in the next lecture, the scope of operations.